Uh, kia ora Tefano. really good to be with you again. I want to start off by saying happy birthday to Irene Oxley, who turned 80 uh, last week, uh, just a little bit after Ian turned 80. So some of you will know them from way back as part of the worship team and others as part of Keep Active. However you know them, just um, next time you see them, say happy birthday. Happy birthday, Irene. Uh, with this level two, we've been aware of the power of takeaways and the importance of takeaways. So today, hopefully you've got one of these Pentecost takeaway packs. If you haven't, don't panic. You can still be part of the whole service. But if you have, it gives you a little bit more, uh, more ways to engage with the service. It's a bit like a mixed grill or a licorice all sort. There's kind of a lot of different things in here uh, that you can be part of and you can use to open up our thinking, to open up our hearts, to be more aware and conscious of the work of the Holy Spirit. It's Pentecost, it's the coming of the Holy Spirit, and we want to be aware of the Holy Spirit with us. So to begin with, you might want to take the candle out and light that up. A candle brings light in the darkness. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is to bring light in the places which are confusing for us, the places where we're not sure where to go, the places that are unclear, where we need God's light. Why don't we pray together uh, for the Holy Spirit to reveal God's way to us today. In Ephesians 1, it says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Lord, we pray your Holy Spirit would reveal truth to us. We pray your Holy Spirit would reveal the love of God to us. We pray your Holy Spirit would reveal what you want to say to us what you want to show us, and where you want to lead us this morning. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds to be open to you afresh. Amen. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Biglang dumating mula sa langit ang isang ugong na gaya ng humahagibis na hangin malakas at pinuno nito ang buong bahay kung saan sila'y nakaupo. He oe puta maya na kiara tau e tahiarero he me amanganga ano he ahi a tau iho ana ki runga ki tene ki tene ora tau. Apostle Brarte Randin de Nale. Ella vrim pashutat ma narnya varai atma vavar kuchiri pa nalge do bole ani pashagal sam sarchi torangi. Sanono fu Jerusalem tangatu Utah. Inama te tau ili atua. Mai no o ma lava, o le lalo langi. Tara se shabda shunlo, ebang one ki shekhane joro holo. Niz niz bhaashai, shishyo de kothabol te dekhe, shei lukera, jeno buddhi hara hoye gelo. Wie is das möglich, riefen sie aus sich. Alle diese leute sind doch aus Galilea. それなのに、私たち命名の国の言葉で話すのを聞くとは一体どうしたことでしょう。In that pack you've got, you'll find some alphabet soup. It's in a little brown bag, and in that, with that alphabet soup, you can make just about any word you like. You can make just about any simple sentence you like, any simple prayer. And we've just heard the languages being spoken, languages from English. Filipino, Māori, Hindi, Samoan, Bengali, German and Japanese. Just some of the 6,500 living languages today. And each one of them a language of somebody's heart. Each one of them a language of connecting with God. So take your alphabet soup and think about what a simple prayer might be from your heart to God. Or a simple request that you might want to put out. You can put anything out using that alphabet soup. And God speaks through all kinds of languages to us and longs that people of all languages would know his love and care.
I'm Michelle, and normally I'm behind the scenes planning and organising. But today I'm here on the other side of the camera for a change to tell you about something very precious to me. Today I want to tell you about my necklace. This is made from the mould of a sycamore seed, and it's very precious to me because it was a gift from my husband Rob for our 25th wedding anniversary. It's also very special because it's made from silver, a precious metal, and AJ is going to chat with us soon a little bit more about silver and gold. It's special because it's made by the sister of a dear friend. And finally, it's really important to me because it symbolizes the work of Wairau Tapu, the Holy Spirit. Firstly, the seed part contains new life. Wherever the seed lands, with soil, light and water, new life will happen, the seed will transform. Wherever the Holy Spirit is at work, there will be new life and transformation of individual lives and of communities. When people see my necklace, they usually say that it takes them back to their childhood, throwing sycamore seeds or helicopters up in the air, watching them spin and whir around and land in unpredictable places, near or far, depending on where the wind takes them. It's hard to predict where these seeds will eventually fall. The Holy Spirit is like that too. As Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3 verse 8, the wind blows where it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And finally, this seed reminds me of the sycamore tree in the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a very short man um, that resonates with me. I'm the shortest in my family, and even though I have the highest shoes, um, Zacchaeus needed to climb a sycamore tree to see Jesus in the crowd. Jesus stopped and spoke to Zacchaeus. Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' home for tea. Um, Zacchaeus' life was transformed by that encounter with Jesus. Zacchaeus went on to align himself with the very people Jesus had come to seek and save. Each of us has sycamore tree encounters in our lives. One of mine was when Daphne from Project Easter emailed and asked, would we like to teach music to inmates in prison? I wasn't very keen, but Daphne was very determined, so we went, and it turned out our lives were a bit transformed and we met some of Jesus' friends teaching music behind bars. So those are the reasons I chose this necklace of sycamore seed as a special gift. So in your packs today, you will find some sycamore seeds. If you haven't got a pack at your place, um, 
check out a local park later today and find some seeds. And I invite you to throw them up in the air and try and guess where they might land. You might like to pray and listen as you do this. You may like to watch and wonder, where is God inviting you to partner with Wairua Tapu, where he is bringing new life and transformation? It may be somewhere near, or it may be somewhere far, somewhere expected, or somewhere unexpected and surprising. Wherever it is, I'm sure you will encounter Jesus and meet some of his friends. As we sing this next song with Chilana and Isaac and Steve, my prayer is that you'll have a fresh sense of spirit falling and that you'll have a fresh sense of spirit calling you. Uh, this morning as we look at a passage from Acts, I want to pick up one that talks about the power of God. Uh, the disciples are walking. They met a man who's born uh, lame. And they called, met him at the gate called Beautiful, and he asks them to give him some money. And uh, Peter says, look at us. So the man says, gives them their, his attention, expecting they're going to give him something. And Peter says to him, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And taking him by the hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Uh, in the pack, you'll see there's a little five cent coin. And in this passage, it talks about actually the power of the spirit being more valuable than silver or gold. Uh, having this treasure of the spirit is more valuable than the treasure of money. And yet where do we so often put our trust and our hope? Uh, kids, with these little five cent coins when I were growing, was growing up were actually really valuable. For a five cent coin, I could buy quite a stack of lollies. You could buy a five cent mixture, which is a reasonable size bag of lollies, or you could buy a four cent ice block and still have one more cent to buy a big lolly or maybe two smaller ones or even three. There were some of the smaller lollies, you get three just for one cent. When I was a kid, this coin was really valuable, but now it's worthless. It has no value whatsoever. And I think that's what this passage is trying to tell us, that often we put our faith and our trust and our hope in things that really have no value in comparison to the good things that God wants to give us, the good things that His Holy Spirit wants to give us. Um, and in this time when people are unsure about jobs and money and investments, this is a really timely reminder of what is our real treasure. The Holy Spirit comes to give us a knowledge of God, comes to give us 
things that are far more valuable than just bits and pieces, bags of lollies or ice blocks or something else. The Holy Spirit comes to give us the dynamos of God, comes to give us the energy of God, the life of God, and help us to see where God wants to share that life and energy and dynamos with us and through us for others. The Spirit's powerful. We see that in this passage in Acts chapter 2. It comes like a violent wind and like fire and brings understanding like the languages. But the Spirit also guides us to find truth, to have understanding and to transform us to be more like God. The Spirit is really far more valuable than so many of the things like money that we treasure so much. When we come to God and the Spirit leads us to God, we come to know things which are good, truthful, loving, precious and valuable and that's what the spirit wants to do in all our lives but how do we know when the holy spirit is at work in us how do we sense what is the holy spirit and what's something else well one way to do that is to become a little bit more aware of where god is at work in our day a little bit more aware aware of when in conversations we felt something of that energy in life a little bit more aware of when we experience love through someone's conversation or we experience love through seeing and the wonder of nature. A little bit more aware of where we see that we're able to help or com- offer compassion or to serve someone else. When we reflect on those times, those times that were very alive to us in those ways, are indications of where the Spirit is at work. The Spirit will always do two things in us will lead us to a deeper sense of God and will involve us in producing fruit. The sort of fruit that the Bible talks about is the care, the compassion and love of others. So where's the Spirit at work in your life? Where are you experiencing that life, that truth, that love, that sense of a real energy and dynamos? Those are the clues of where the Spirit's at work. And always it will lead to fruit of giving, sharing, offering more to others and drawing us towards God, a sense of God being at work in us. Last week, Steve talked about a woman who, seeing someone on the side of the road, felt a sense from God's Spirit to give them her jacket. That's how we learn to trust the Spirit. We listen, we sense, and we respond. And the more we do it, the more we become open to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and far more valuable than silver and gold.
makes place for you, oh our God. We make space for you, oh our God. Me inoe tato, let us pray. Eti atua tapu rawa, mahi tohu, tino tapu, tino tika, noo te karoria, noo te purotu. E karanga ana tōu wairua tapu, i ngā hunga, i ngā iwi, i ngā reo, ki a manako ki ngā mea miharo e paua e koe. Nā tōu wairua tapu i tiri te rongo pai ki Aotearoa. I karanga ana koe i tēnei rā, i tēnei rā, ki a kotahi ngā iwi i raro i tōu maru, ki a whangaia te honga matikai, ki a whakaurangia ngā tūroro, ki a tukoa ngā whakarau, ki a haere noa, ki a matara te tariatu, ki tōu rangatiratanga, ki a koe te whakapai, te kororea, te aroha, i tēnei rā, i tēnā rā. Mai a mātou, mai te katoa, i konei i ngā wā katoa. Āmeni. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and just, glory and goodness come from you. Through the Holy Spirit, Nations, races and languages have been called to welcome the great things you have done. Through the Holy Spirit, you have brought this good news to our land. Day by day, you call us to be one people, to be your people. Day by day, you call us to feed the hungry, heal the sick, deliver the oppressed and to wait and watch for your kingdom. Praise glory and love be yours this and every day from us and from all people here and everywhere amen if you just take your uh, paper paper bag of popcorn and take out a few kernels in the palm of your hand and put a bit of oil on your frying pan heat it up and my lovely assistant's doing that for me. So, um, so that's what you do. When the oil is hot enough, just add your popcorn. And with the lid on, this is, this is church with the lid on as the popcorn heats. This is what you see, virtually nothing. But you do hear the occasional dink and um, with the lid off as we're going to do now it's altogether different it becomes more chaotic more unpredictable more uh, or far more interesting the transformation is obvious um, the popcorn goes from this hard kernel is blowing inside out and will leave the pan often and um, is consumed. The other aspect of the popcorn that um, is in our, our little notes um, talks of it talks about the self, the real self and the shadow self. And um, the real self is inside the shadow self. Well, the self we sort of show people. And the Spirit of God brings about a transformation from this to this. It is interesting that the real self, brought about by heat, by the spirit, is far larger than the shadow self. As an illustration of uh, church with a lid off, 
If there were kids here, they would already be consuming the popcorn. It's um, irresistible. Most of the popcorn leaves the pan, which I rather like. The, the point of, you know, the spirit moving within our, within our church is that we would be transformed and, in a sense, leave the building. And um, sometimes the popcorn that has popped just stays in the pan and scorches. It was meant to leave and actually be eaten. Over the last few weeks, we've done communion in quite a few different ways, and people have used lots of different items to have communion. We've had uh, hot cross buns and Anzac biscuits and crackers and bread, and people have used coffee and orange juice and probably a whole lot of other things for the liquid as well. And today, we're going to use the, the popcorn. Great little illustration there about how our lives can be quite hard, um, tight, small, and then they can be transformed by heat into something much bigger, far more open, and certainly far more tasty. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do in each of our lives. The Holy Spirit wants to transform us, to take away the hardness and to open us up and to make us bigger than we would have been without the Holy Spirit at work in us. And what Jesus said when he started communion was he took the bread, he gave thanks for the bread, he broke the bread or he poured out the wine and he invited people to eat and to drink. And so today we're taking popcorn. And we're aware the popcorn has been transformed. It's been opened up. It's been broken. And we give thanks for it. And we ask the Spirit would do the same in our lives. Break us open. Pour the Spirit over us. And transform us and make us different. Make us bigger than we ever would be without the Spirit. Make us more open. And make us softer.
Well, it's been great to be with you again. I hope there's some things in that pack that have opened up your thinking and understanding of how the Spirit wants to be at work in your life. There's some things you can continue to ponder and pray about and to ask the Holy Spirit to bring you that life, that dynamos, that energy, that transformation, that involvement in God's world and God's mission. That's what the Spirit's all about and invites us to be. And it's far more precious than anything else. Um, that's what we've been celebrating and enjoying today. If you've got things you want to send back to us, you've got pictures of today, you've got uh, ideas and thoughts, maybe the Holy Spirit is inspired within you, you just want to feedback, um, send this to together at swbc.org.nz. In a minute we're going to have a benediction, I think you'll love that, and then we're going to have a piece of news about World Visions 40, our famine. But before then, just let me say a couple of things. One is next Sunday we'll be online again. We're not going to rush to being in having services in person, so for next Sunday we'll be online and then we'll review it and pick things going forward. But maybe invite some other people over, some people in your life group, your home group, your community, your ministry, or people who live nearby, and have brunch together and share the service together and enjoy being together with a few others. And also, don't forget our giving and our support of our church, both locally and globally. This is a time when, as a body, some are only able to give less than they normally would, but others can give more. So let's be part of that together. Uh, great to have you with us. God bless you and go well this week. Kia ora Southwest Baptist. My name is Sydney and this is Nora. And Nora is just over five weeks old. We are part of the Oaklands community and we are going to be doing um, the benediction for today's service. You are God's servants, gifted with dreams and visions. Upon you rests the grace of God like flames of fire. Love and serve the Lord in the strength of the Spirit. May the deep peace of Christ be with you, the strong arms of God sustain you, and the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you in every way. Amen. Hey everyone, how's it going? For those who haven't met me, my name is Isaac Wilson and I am one of the World Vision 40 Hour Famine Ambassadors for this year. I also go to Southwest Baptist, so I'm stoked to be able to speak with you all today. Most of you have all heard about, if not done, the 40 Hour Famine. I've done it for most of my life, but last year it became a lot more real for me. I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to travel to Malawi and meet people and communities who are impacted by climate change. Children and their families are fighting to survive cyclones, droughts and flash floods that are unseasonable, unpredictable and devastating. I want to tell you about one young person we met whose story was so similar to thousands of others. Priska is a 14 year old. Her community had been struck by a cyclone, and she told us this. First, I heard a big bang in the night, which woke me up. The bang was my grandmother's house falling down from the rainwaters pouring down across the fields. I could hear tools and cutlery being washed away, clanging against each other. People were crying as they searched for their loved ones or as they were being swept away themselves. I was so scared that we would be next. Prisca's family also solely re relies on crops for food, and when it floods, their crops literally wash away. This is the reality for so many people, people who haven't contributed much to climate change and yet are among the first to be impacted by it. Will the 40-hour famine look different this year? Yeah, most likely. We've all been focused on COVID-19 and life in our bubbles, and rightly so. 
But if it has taught me anything, it's how important it is to care for others, to seek out those who need our help and do what we can for them. Which is why I'm really excited to see what South West Baptist is doing for the 40-hour famine this year. I'll hand over to the youth group team, who will give you all the details. But on half of the beautiful people I met in Malawi, I am so glad we can count on you. Hey everyone, my name's Holly and I'm speaking on behalf of SYC um, and I have the privilege of working with YG, the Intermediate Youth Group and we are so excited to be able to continue to support World Vision and the 40 hour famine. Last year, YG, the Intermediate Group went so hard and raised almost $2,000 for the 40 hour famine. Um, it was so incredible seeing um, how moved um, the youth were for for the situations in the world and how they wanted to make a positive difference. Um, so just kind of seeing their heart for the world um, and feeling and able to make a positive difference themselves was so, so cool to be a part of. Um, this year, we're doing it a little bit differently and we're promoting doing, instead of 40 hours no eating or 40 hours doing a challenge, um, doing 40 acts of random kindness. So. As a youth group, we're going to be getting sponsors and then we're going to be doing 40 random acts of kindness in our communities. Um, in this way, we're supporting the global by fundraising and getting money, but also supporting our local by doing these um, random acts of kindness. Um, so we're so excited to be doing this. Um, and if you guys are wanting to be a part of this as a church to support this, um, you can sponsor a youth. Um, or you can take up the challenge yourself and you can sign up at the World Vision website um, and do your own random acts of kindness and your own fundraising. Um, but we'd love to be seeing um, our youth being supported and the um, World Vision cause being supported. So yeah, super easy. Let's do it.